It's much faster than the Arlos analogs. It's not as long lasting, but it lasts the better part of an hour, and then people want more. And so, um, so I had this bottle of pills out there, and, and there were some people that were true five of oxy DMT freaks, and they thought they knew uh, the Bible five of oxy DMT chapter and verse, and they found out that they didn't. But then, in fact, there was a better way of using it. And, uh, and so there was this feeding frenzy on the bottle of uh, five of oxy DMT, such as I've never seen except with cocaine base, or sometimes with good cocaine salt, that like, you know, people can't take their eyes off of the drug on the table, and they make little involuntary movements. <laughs> and you can see they're controlling themselves and trying not to break the cue, and uh, grab the pipe that's supposed to go over there, and, and not over here, and so on. Because you know people can use these things to treat drug habituation, but you can also become habituated to these things that are used to treat drug habituation. So it's not a panacea for for that or anything else. So anyway, I, I, I had to stash, I had to hide the stash because it wasn't all mine. I, you know, I mean, we really went through a, a, a good number of these pills before. I don't know how I did it, but I somehow got it out of the way. And, 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 anyway, so again with these snuffs, you see that the banisteriosis is added to the snuffs. So why? I studied that. It turns out here it does potentiate it. And so with pure compounds, you take 10 milligrams of 5 methoxy DMT, this crystal, to snuff it, and that'll get you off. But if you put 5 milligrams only, 5, not 50, 100, of harmony or harmony with it and snuff that, it doubles the potency. It's like 20 milligrams of 5-methoxy DMT. How do I know that? Well, because I tried it uh, systematically with weighed compounds, weighed amounts. And then um, you can learn a lot about pharmacology in yourself. That it's, you can't, you hardly can learn in animals, no matter how many you have and how much money you have in research grant. Far from being some inferior stopgap measure, for people that unfortunately didn't get their finished grad school and they aren't professors and, and so forth, um, it, it's actually far superior if one studies the literature and if one is logical about it. But for example, I don't need to take blood out of my you know, spinal fluid to see whether harming gets into my brain or a metabolite harming, because if I can feel it there, if I can feel the effect, like I've taken a Valium, well, I know it's got me. And so, with the ayahuasca analogs, I found I needed maybe 50, 60, sometimes a little more of harmony and about double of harmony so that any amount of DMT above 25 milligrams would be active orally. Um, so then, naturally, I tested that amount by itself without the DMT. And sure enough, I could feel it. I could feel it here. So I know, okay, it's getting into the brain. And then now I start theorizing, okay, it's going to be competing for the receptor sites. It's going to be activating the GABA receptor and hyperpolarizing the membranes and spilling everything down. And sure enough, then I feel, okay, when I add 30 milligrams of DMT, I feel it. But if I smoke or inhale the vapor of the free base of 30 milligrams, I get much more effect. So, in the case of the snuffs, I take that 5 milligrams that I've added to double the potency of 10 milligrams of 5 milligrams of DMT. I sniff that by itself and I don't feel anything. So if it is getting into the brain, it's in levels that are low enough that it's not particularly significant pharmacologically. And indeed, if it's doubling the potency, how could it be significant pharmacologically? It's just keeping MAO in my cheek or in my nose, because I also do this sublingually, and the shamans do as well. It's just as active under the tongue as here, but it's, you have to lie with your head on a pillow, your tongue blocking your throat for half an hour, they're looking at the watch and so to make sure you absorb it all there to do a proper experiment. So it's not practical to use it that way. But so, uh, as I say, you can find out a lot if you do these experiments carefully and you're sensitive to your body and so forth. And it, it's another reason why it's, it's the ethical procedure because it's much more economical, ecological, and uh, fun, also. <laughs> and so, I, I, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, why shouldn't it be fun? Um, and, and yeah, as well, Blake said also, fun I love, but too much fun is of all things the most loathsome, so keep that in mind also. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so I became more interested in these, um, these um, pharma pena type and also pharma yoko, which is with the bufotene. And in the course of these experiments, I also found that the dreaded bufotene, which is associated with toes, 
and uh, is associated with evil experiments done by mad scientists working for the CIA in the 1950s in the United States and Canada and perhaps some other countries. Uh, and uh, you know, it had been theorized over to death that nobody had taken the trouble of trying it except some poor convicts that didn't have a voice in the matter who were you know, offered probably the shots of morphine um, uh, in exchange for submitting these experiments. But uh, they injected an IV, bufotine. Bufotine is 5-hydroxy-DMT. And the, this neurotransmitter, serotonin, is 5-hydroxy-T, or 5 hydroxy And so it's not a good idea to inject um, bufotine into your veins, because it, it's called serotonin, because it's involved in maintaining blood pressure, toning the serum, toning the blood pressure. There are all kinds of serotonin receptors in your veins. And so, as they describe very um, casually um, in the paper, well, their faces turned the color of an eggplant, and it was later described as a, as a, a plum and so forth. So they had a circulatory crisis. Um, anyway, so I took the trouble also to examine the literature and make my own models of these snuts with pure compounds, because no one really knew how these snuts were working, and a lot of people would loosely say, oh, it's DMT, whatever. So uh, bufotidine and 5 hydroxy dmt I also found are active orally. They don't need mahalamine oxidase inhibitors. Uh, but in this case, they can be made a little bit more active by the mahalamine oxidase inhibitor. So with that, uh, in that case, with 5 methoxy dmt which today in shamanism is not taken in oral preparations, although it probably was at one time, you can say in that case that the beta carbolines um, can potentiate it. Um, in the stomach as well, and they definitely do in the nose, um, and a uh, number of the time. Um, I, I don't know what the time is. Am I running low on time? Do think it's supposed to go to 12? Time. What's that? Uh, it's time. Okay, do we have time for questions? Um, well, uh, Norman, we have to stop at 12.30. Uh, okay. Maybe just some minutes. <laughs> okay.